Hey guys, it's Kaylee and welcome back to Be In A Suit where I talk about sustainability because I dream of a world where world leaders actually follow through on their very public commitments that they made. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome back to another deep dive in my SDG series. For those of you who are new to the channel, these are videos where I go into detail on each of the 17 sustainable development goals. Now, because of the depth I go into, they tend to be pretty lengthy, but at the end, I do summarize the goal in like two minutes. So if you just want a super high level overview, you can jump to that section by checking out the chapters in the description box below. And if you haven't already watched my primer on the SDGs, I do recommend checking that out first so that you understand the overall framework that each of these goals is a part of. Today, we're zooming in on SDG 13 on climate action, maybe one of the most famous goals. Climate action is the greatest challenge and threat of our time, and this this goal is all about how we mitigate and adapt, and more specifically, the action plans, education and awareness and financing needed to rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and fight climate change. As always, you'll find a link to the blog post in the description box below that includes links to all research used in this video, resources where you can learn more about SDG 13, and a few organizations who work on this topic that you may choose to follow or support. Okay, let's get into SDG 13, Climate Action. Before we look at the targets, let's look at a little history. The SDGs were adopted about a month and a half before the Paris Agreement was reached. So while climate action was included before the specific targets of the Paris Agreement were agreed upon by the international community, this is why you'll find that the climate goals are much more broad and general in the SDGs than what is included in the Paris Agreement. Having said that, the UN recognizes that all global sustainability frameworks are complementary and reinforcing, so the ultimate goal of SDG 13 is to achieve the Paris Agreement. Let me give you a high-level overview of the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement was reached on December 12, 2015 in Paris, France at the 21st session of the Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Convention on Climate Change. The agreement was later ratified or formally adopted by 193 countries coming into effect on November 4th, 2016. Four countries, Iran, Eritrea, Libya, and Yemen have never ratified the agreement. The Paris Agreement has three main goals to keep global warming well below two degrees Celsius compared with pre-industrial levels with an ambition of limiting the rise to 1.5 degrees. For reference, it's estimated that global temperatures have already risen 1.2 degrees Celsius. Number two, to increase the ability to adapt to the adverse impacts of climate change and foster climate resilience and low greenhouse gas emission development in a matter that does not threaten food production. And three, to make finance flows consistent with a pathway towards low greenhouse gas emissions and climate resilient development. The agreement is made up of 15 articles, many of which spell out the infrastructure and mechanisms needed to reach these goals, including things like carbon markets, carbon finance, technology and innovation, capacity building, education and awareness raising, transparency and compliance. A key feature of the Paris Agreement is that it took a very bottom-up approach. Unlike previous attempts to negotiate such agreement where global targets were set and then kind of divided up amongst the countries to achieve, the Paris Agreement actually allowed countries to submit realistic targets themselves that they had determined on their own. These are referred to as NDCs, Nationally Determined Contributions. The UNFCCC explicitly states that the Paris Agreement works on a five-year cycle of increasingly ambitious climate action carried out by countries. What this means in practice is that every five years, countries resubmit their NDCs with the goal of them becoming increasingly more ambitious over time. The Paris Agreement is a legally binding treaty, but it's actually a mix of legally binding and non-binding provisions. It is an agreement under international law binding on all parties, and it requires them to submit NDCs, but it has no legal enforcement mechanisms for countries that do not meet what was promised of them. So with that background, let's dive into the three targets and two main means of implementation on SDG 13 climate action. Target 13.1, strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate related hazards and natural disasters in all countries. The first target in the climate goal is focused on adaptation, centering people in the climate discussion. It is estimated that if the world reaches the 1.5 degree C target, the lives of more than 3 billion people will be at risk due to intensifying heat waves, droughts, flooding, wildfires, sea level rise, and famines. 
Adaptation is defined by the UNFCCC as adjustments in ecological, social, or economic systems in response to actual or expected climate stimuli and their effects. While that sounds quite technical, what it essentially means is that climate change is a reality and we need to make changes in processes, practices, and structures to mitigate potential damage to people and ecosystems. Adaptation actions can take many forms. They range from things like building flood defenses, setting up early warning systems for cyclones, switching to drought resistant crops, redesigning communication systems, business operations, and government policies. Now this target is measured by three indicators, the number of deaths, missing persons, and directly affected persons attributed to disasters per 100,000 population, the number of countries that adopt and implement national disaster risk reduction strategies in line with the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, and the proportion of local governments that adopt and implement local disaster risk reduction strategies in line with those national disaster risk reduction strategies just discussed before. So let's look into how we're doing on each of those. The number of deaths and missing persons due to disasters per 100,000 of the population has steadily decreased from 1.64 during the period from 2005 to 2015 to 0.86 from 2012 to 2021. However, the number of persons affected by disasters has actually rose from 1,198 during the period of 2005 to 2015 to 2000 2113 during 2012 to 2021. So less people dying, but more people affected. The number of countries with national strategies for disaster risk reduction has increased from 55 in 2015 to 126 by the end of 2021. This can be largely attributed to the adoption of the Sendai framework and the Paris Agreement in 2015 that reinforced the need for climate adaptation. Based on this, a total of 118 countries have reported having some level of policy coherence with other global frameworks. Target 13.2, integrate climate change measures into national policy strategies and planning. This is quite a broad target, but it's basically asking, are countries actually implementing climate action? It's measured by two indicators, the number of countries with nationally determined contributions, long-term strategies, national adaptation plans, and adaptation communications, and total greenhouse gas emissions per year. So the big picture, what we are hoping to reduce. So when we look at how we're doing here, all 193 countries that have ratified the Paris Agreement have submitted an initial nationally determined contribution, and 177 countries have submitted an updated NDC in 2020 at the time of the first ramp up. Of those new NDCs, 107 were more ambitious in their emissions reduction Despite this, global emissions continue to rise. Global CO2 emissions for 2022 increased by 1.5% relevant to 2021, reaching 36.1 gigatons of CO2, and that's up 7.9% from 2020 and 2% from 2019. The reason for the big jump with 2020 is because of course it was an exceptional year because of the pandemic. That year we saw a decrease of 5.4% in emissions, but as you can see, we sprung back up very quickly. To put this in perspective, the world has a carbon budget of 250 gigatons for a likelihood of 50% to stay under that 1.5 degree C. So the publication Nature estimates that our 2022 emissions consumed 13 to 36% of the remaining carbon budget, suggesting permissible emissions could be depleted within two to seven years, with estimated exhaustion being around 2029. So yeah, not good. Target 13.3, improve education, awareness raising, and human and institutional capacity on climate change, mitigation, adaptation, impact reduction, and early warning. The importance of education for climate action is broadly recognized by the international community. Climate change education helps people to understand and address the impacts of the climate crisis, empowering them with the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes needed to act as agents of change. Interestingly, this target is measured by the same indicator as the education goal in SDG 12, which is the extent to which global citizenship education and education for sustainable development are mainstreamed in national education policies, curricula, teacher education, and student assessment. However, in practice, the measurement is more focused on how climate issues show up in these educational structures rather than broad sustainability topics. An analysis of 100 national curriculum frameworks reveals that 47% do not mention climate change. In 2021, despite 95% of teachers recognizing the importance of teaching on climate change, only one third are capable of effectively explaining its effects in their regions. Additionally, 70% of young people can only describe the broad principles of climate change in 2022. This goal also has two means of implementation targets focused on giving developing countries the resources they need to tackle climate change. Target 13. 
Point A, implement the commitment undertaken by developed country parties to the UNFCCC to a goal of mobilizing jointly $100 billion annually by 2020 from all sources to address the needs of developing countries in the context of meaningful mitigation actions and transparency on implementation and fully operationalize the Green Climate Fund through its capitalization as soon as possible. Now, this is extremely important for climate action. The Paris Agreement recognizes that developing countries do not bear as much historical responsibility for climate change and also are more vulnerable to its impacts. And therefore, it calls on developed countries to provide the financial resources necessary to implement. Unfortunately, developed countries have never officially reached that 100 billion annual goal. However, the OECD does have some preliminary estimates that indicate perhaps in 2020 they finally passed that barrier. But 2021 is our most recent verified number and it was only 89.6 billion. So there's still a lot of work to go here. And finally, the last means of implementation target is target 13.B. Promote mechanisms for raising capacity for effective climate change related planning and management in least developed countries and small island developing states, including focusing on women, youth, local and marginalized communities. So that's all I've got for you. So let's summarize and wrap this one up. SDG 13 is focused on climate action. The SDGs were adopted about a month and a half before the Paris Agreement, but the two frameworks go hand in hand. The Paris Agreement aims to keep global warming well below two degrees Celsius compared with pre-industrial levels with an ambition of limiting the rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. 193 countries are parties to the agreement. The 13 SDG has three targets. Target 13.1 is focused on adaptation, centering people in the climate discussion. It is estimated that if the world breaches the 1.5 degrees Celsius target, the lives of more than 3 billion people will be affected. While deaths from climate disasters are decreasing, the number of people affected are increasing. Target 13.2 looks at mitigation and more broad implementation. 177 countries have submitted updated nationally determined contributions, yet emissions continue to arise. Global CO2 emissions for 2022 increased by 1.5% relevant to 2021, reaching 36.1 gigatons. It is expected that we will breach our carbon budget by 2029. Target 13.3 calls for climate education. Unfortunately, it is estimated that nearly half of curriculums do not mention climate change globally, and only a third of teachers are able to properly explain the concept. This goal also has three means of implementation targets focused on giving developing countries the resources and tools they need to tackle climate change as they do not bear as much historical responsibility for climate change, but are the most vulnerable to its impacts. One large part of means of implementation is climate finance. And that's SDG 13. And that's it. That's all I have for you. If you learned something in this video, give it a like, and I'll be back very soon with SDG 14 on Life on Land. And as always, don't forget to check out the blog post if you want more information or to continue learning about this topic. See you in the next one. And until then, keep fighting the good fight. Bye.